morning. I guess it's, oh, there we go. All right. Now that you've all shown up, there's a guarantee there will be no rain for the remainder of the day. <laughs> will, you, uh, will you all please rise? And will Re Regina Williams please come forward? Ms. Williams will lead us in singing the national anthem, after which we ask that you please remain standing for the invocation. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. All oh, the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets Red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Regina. The invocation will be offered by Reverend Adrian Thorne, senior pastor at the First Presbyterian Church of Brooklyn, located in Brooklyn Heights. Thank you. In my Christian tradition, we celebrate the day of Pentecost this Sunday, the coming of God's Holy Spirit, and we mark that day with the color red. In these historic and tumultuous times for our country and our world, my invocation this morning invites God's spirit of peace and justice in this place, in our lives, and in your call to the practice of law. Let us pray. Blow, wind, blow. Spirit of peace, come. Let your peacemaking spirit fall like rain upon all who have gathered here today, preparing us for new ways of being your peacemaking people. May these practitioners of law, these teachers of law, these lovers of justice work for the peace of the cities where you send them, understanding that the welfare of their communities determines their own welfare. Blow, wind, blow, spirit of peace, come. Make us hungry for a world in which violence is a relic and fear a distant memory, and then help us to make it our reality. Make us thirsty for peace that flows like a fountain, and then soften our resistance to its possibility. Stir up hunger and thirst today in these Brooklyn Law School graduates and then send them out to pursue the things which make for peace and the building up of your people. If your people don't change, nothing will change. 
And so we invite your spirit of peace and justice into this space and into our lives to change things, to upend things, to take us places we never dreamt of, to believe in the common good and strive to achieve it, to always be on the lookout, expecting your holy surprises. Blow, wind, blow. Spirit of peace, come. Ignite in your people a deep sense of kinship with one another because we all, in fact, belong to you, regardless of ethnic, racial background, gender identity, sexual orientation, class status, social location, primary language, religious affiliation. We all belong to you. Your love is a force that heals the world, and so we call forth your power of love and peace and justice to cover these graduates, that they may serve, that they may serve all the people as bridge builders and way makers between and among the communities of the world. Keep them hopeful and creative and relentless in pursuit of justice. Remembering that peace begins with us, may the spirit of peace energize us this day for the good work that is ours to do. May the spirit of peace keep us from growing weary or faint. May the spirit of peace keep us joyful. Hold us, spirit of peace, in the nurturing embrace of your arms and in the supportive care of this precious learning community. For it is in your holy name that we invite your presence today and every day, trusting that you hear our prayers and trusting that you answer. Amen. Please be seated. Welcome to the members of the class of 2018. I'd also like to include the alumni parents, alumni spouses, and other alumni relatives of the graduating students seated on the stage. Today, we extend a warm welcome to the family and friends of our graduates and thank them for all the support and encouragement that helped make it possible for the graduates to reach this day. I ask our graduates to give their family and friends a warm round of applause. I am pleased to begin the program by calling on Jamie Michelle Freilich, valedictorian, to deliver the valedictorian address. Honored guests, esteemed faculty, and my fellow graduates, good morning. Today is quite a day. It is a day to celebrate our accomplishments and a day to thank the many people who helped us get to this point. I am thrilled and honored to be standing with you today to do exactly that by talking about our experiences as Brooklyn Law School students. Though many law students and lawyers alike bemoan the absence of reality or the inaccuracy of the law in shows like Ally McBeal, The Good Wife, and Suits, or even classic works like My Cousin Vinny and The Incomparable Legally Blonde. <laughs> All are accurate in one respect. In each, the protagonist's success was possible only when they relied on the support of those around them, seeking out and finding a community of peers to help them achieve their goals and to assist when things went off track. Those fictional stories resonate because they are emblematic of what each of us has found at Brooklyn Law School, 
a community. When we began, regardless of which program we entered, LLM, two-year, four-year, or us regular old three-year JD folk, we knew very little about the journey ahead of us. We had heard rumors of professors' merciless cold calling, but knowing what was coming didn't make that initial experience any less difficult. In fact, it feels like just yesterday that I was called called in civil procedure to answer the apparently very difficult question of what are lawyers useful for? <laughs> A question that today I feel more confident in my ability to answer. But as we recovered from the shock of those initial cold calls, we started to figure things out. We found our favorite study spots, and then we found new ones after the library was redone. We discovered where to find free non-pizza lunches, and as we sat through our first semester, we learned that a tort is far more than an Italian dessert we once loved, <laughs> but also an area of the law allowing people to recover when they jump into a lake forgetting that they don't know how to swim. We realized that while we each came to law school for our own personal reasons, we would not survive the experience if we went through it alone, because the intricacies of the law were best learned with others. We found study partners or groups, not, not thanks, not only to give the non-lawyers in our lives a break from our incessant ramblings, but to help ourselves and to help each other. We were a true team, learning from each other, challenging each other, and pushing each other. Without a doubt, I would not be standing before this room today if not for the incredible people I met over the last few years. People who were incredible classmates, and who became amazing study partners and some of my closest friends. Together, we excelled not only in the classroom, but in all facets of our law school experiences. We won moot court competitions, we won writing competitions, and we did it all because we figured out how to master the Blue Book, the surprisingly nuanced Bible of legal citations. We participated in pro bono projects run exclusively by us, the students. Brooklyn Law School's four journals produced thousands of pages of scholarship filled with student-written notes and articles that were selected and edited by the students. And beyond that, we involved ourselves in the larger Brooklyn community, stepping away from abstract theory and casebooks to apply our skills and our passion to the important debates of our time. We marched to end gun violence. We spoke up for women's equality we gathered to effect change in the wake of the first travel ban. We combated discrimination, such as that highlighted by the Black Lives Matter movement, and all of that is just the tip of the iceberg. This class accomplished so much because we set goals, we worked hard, and throughout it all, we worked together to achieve what we set out to accomplish. Class of 2018, while we might not want to admit just how much these last few years have aged us, they most certainly have matured us. What we have been able to achieve together is incredible. And while our achievements are noteworthy, I would be remiss to not mention our professors. They are the people who encouraged us to work together, the people without whom this day would not exist. On a personal note, as a 1L, I literally ran into Professor Jenger during a race. I was struggling, and as Professor Jenger shot past me, he yelled out, you look strong, keep going. That moment stuck with me because his encouragement was what I needed to reach the finish line. And just as Professor Jenger encouraged me during my run, it was the esteemed Brooklyn Law faculty that helped each of us cross the proverbial finish line of law school, cheering us on, encouraging us when we most needed it, and providing us the education and tools to take on what comes next. We have had the exceptional opportunity to learn criminal procedure from former federal and state prosecutors to learn evidence from a future Israeli Supreme Court justice, and to learn constitutional law from the president of the ACLU. Our professors have been instrumental in shaping us into the lawyers we dreamed of becoming. And so, to our professors, as well as to the administrators and staff, thank you. It goes without saying that law school entails more ups and downs than anyone in this room would care to count or remember. But knowing that we are not going through this experience alone, knowing that we had people in our corner, people who would listen, made all the difference. 
and it is why our families and friends are the true guests of honor today. To you, our friends, our family, our support systems. Thank you. We are so grateful for all that you have done over the last few years. And while you might not quite be free from our ramblings yet, as studying for the bar is rumored to be not a picnic, uh, thank you for being there. Thank you for helping us become who we are today and thank you for continuing to encourage our successes. Specifically, thank you to my mom and dad for teaching me the value of humor and for always encouraging me to think outside of the imaginary lines. To my brother Ross, thank you for never hesitating to help me out. And by that I mean for funneling your endless stream of podcasts in my direction, making you the best unofficial research assistant out there. To my grandparents, Thank you for showing me how to handle a challenging situation with grace and elegance and grandma. Thank you for being the best hype woman money can't buy. And to my fiance, Eric, your unyielding encouragement is what helped me make it here today. Thank you for being my most reliable sounding board and my biggest supporter. To my classmates and my fellow graduates, today is a day to reflect, a day to celebrate, a day to thank others, but most of all, it is a day to be immensely proud. We've banded together, we've helped each other, and so congratulations to the class of 2018 because together we made it. Thank you very much, Ms. Froelich. Now I ask Maria Esperanza, Ortez, who was elected by our students to speak on their behalf, to come forward and to address the class. I hope everyone greets their coworkers that way. So, uh, funny story, I actually didn't tell my parents I would be speaking today, so uh, surprise, mom and dad. <laughs> my father always told me life is not a spectator sport, so uh, I really went for it this time. <laughs> uh, good morning, Dean Allard, administration, families, special guests, and of course, class of 2018. All right. uh, you'll see that there's a little bit of a theme uh, to today's uh, talks, but um, in the movie, A League of Their Own, a wise man once said, it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. For those of you who haven't had the pleasure of spending time in our library, this quote is posted above the stairwell. It can be seen coming down the stairs, exiting the library. I pass this quote multiple times a day, multiple times a week during my studies here. And for those of you who haven't deliberately forgotten the experience, this quote even made a guest appearance during the writing competition. I had not seen the movie, but for me, an overwhelmed and underprepared college grad, this quote from the beginning resonated so well. Because for me, maybe like you, the choice to come to law school was not easy. Maybe you also heard that law school would be boring. Maybe you heard it would be expensive, challenging, or how you wouldn't have time to do simply anything. Maybe you heard that law school was the worst. And in thinking about the people who told me law school was going to be hard, I can't help but think, well, duh. <laughs> Obviously, it's supposed to be hard. And for those of you who haven't seen the movie, A League of Their Own, the movie is about the rise of a professional all-female baseball league. That quote I mentioned earlier happens when one of the star players, Dottie, tries to quit the team, and Tom Hanks, her coach in the movie, stops her and says, it's supposed to be hard. If it wasn't hard, everyone would do it. The hard is what makes it great. And that's why this is so important. No kidding, it was hard, and no kidding were there times that I wanted to quit. After a bad day, after not receiving the grade, 
job, or results I wanted after months of hard work. After messing up, feeling stupid, and saying the wrong things. And between myself and from what I've seen from this class, these challenges were not always in the classroom. Challenges, like balancing a job, going back to school, balancing families, health, or maybe even losing a loved one. Perhaps you felt like quitting too. But that's why I'm so happy I came to this law school, because I've been surrounded by encouraging mentors in the form of alumni, classmates, and professors who believed in me when I could not believe in myself. For me, this was a community where a cold call became a nickname. Thank you, Mary Ellen Fullerton. For me, this was a community where technology would break at the worst possible time, only to work with friends to rebuild what you lost or work with friends to cheer yourself up when you couldn't. Where challenges, changes, and being told no were faced with determination and aplomb. From protests, marches, walkouts, taking the bar exam with a newborn, or even braving the new bathroom sinks. <laughs> You'll know what I mean. The heart is what made this so great and I wouldn't be a part of the Brooklyn Law School League without it. So let me sum up this Brooklyn League, the class of 2018, which is one awesome team to walk away with. From award-winning writers, public service leaders, innovators, clinician superstars who work tirelessly to help the underserved. We also have some O'Keefe's lobbyists dodgeball champions, some very good karaokeists, and mediocre comedians. Hi. <laughs> Lesser well-known are the trial ad enthusiasts who will sit with you in the moot courtroom until midnight, thinking we come up with something brilliant only to trash the idea in less than 24 hours. And lastly, the personal tutors and heroes people who will teach you corporations, the rule of perpetuities, what a tort is, get food with you when maybe you should be studying, or lend you a laptop when you forget to bring it to the exam. That happened. Um, passed. Um, <laughs> this league of our own is something that will carry over into our next phase as young lawyers. Because perhaps you, like me, are leaving Brooklyn Law School a different version of the lawyer than you anticipated. Maybe you became a leader, an advocate, a negotiator, or a student speaker, hi, um, because of the support of the people around you. And going into our careers, I hope you remember to continue to look out for each other because today truly was a team effort. From the league in this very room to the people who could not be here today will walk away from today as a team, from Mississippi to New Mexico to the distant boroughs of Brooklyn, sorry, the different distant boroughs of the Queens and the Bronx, because from what I've seen, especially from alumni, once on the Brooklyn League, always on the Brooklyn League. So thank you to my team. The simple acts throughout the years really made this experience great. Running into people in Starbucks, the weird closed mouth smiles, the elevator talk, the late nights in Subotnik, and the, um, <clears throat> and the sterling wine next mornings. <laughs> All these experiences, though so simple, has made my experience here extraordinary. And I look forward to the greatness to come. Thank you all so much for having me. Thank you, Ms. Farley. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the Honorable, Iriz the Honorable Dora L. Irizadi, Chief Judge of the Eastern District of New York. In her outstanding career, Judge Irizadi has achieved a remarkable succession of historic firsts. 
She is the first Hispanic woman to serve as a, as a state judge in New York, the first Hispanic district judge to serve in the Eastern District of New York, and the first Hispanic chief judge of the court and within the Second Circuit. Born in Sebastian, Puerto Rico, and raised in the South Bronx, Judge Irizarry is a graduate of Yale University and Columbia Law School. After law school, she didn't go to Brooklyn, I'm sorry. After law school, she served as an assistant district attorney in the Bronx and in Manhattan, investigating and prosecuting some of the city's largest complex narcotics cases. She also served in the New York State Attorney General's Organized Crime Task Force and as a special prosecutor in the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York. Her exemplary accomplishments and innovative leadership in the fields of narcotics investigations garnered her numerous awards. Her first judicial appointment was in 1995 to the New York City Criminal Court Following that, she served as judge in various state courts until 2004, when she was appointed to the federal bench by President George W. Bush. In 2016, she was appointed chief judge. Those are just the highlights of her very distinguished career. I really encourage you to read her full biography in the program and learn more about her impressive record of public service. Judge Azari has a strong connection to the law school. Seven of our graduates have served as her law clerks over the years. In fact, her first law clerk was the Honorable Jeanette Rodriguez Morick, Brooklyn, Brooklyn Law School class of 1993, who is on stage with us today. Like those before her and after her, Judge Rodriguez Morick quickly distinguished herself in her career. She was elected to the civil court in 2012, and then in 2015, Governor Cuomo appointed her to the New York State Court of Claims. We thank Judge Azari for helping shape the Judge, Judge Rodriguez Morick's career and so many other Brooklyn Law School graduates. Brooklyn Law School is honored and welcomed the Honorable Dora L. Azari today and to award her its highest degree. Will Judge Azari and Dean Allard please join me on the podium. Have a whole routine on. <laughs> Judge Doris Alley, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Brooklyn Law School, I admit you to the degree of Juris Doctor Honoris Causa and cause the appropriate hood to be placed on your shoulders, which we did, and in token thereof, I present you with this diploma. All right, we will now hear from Chief Judge Dora Izari. I get very emotional at these um, sort of things, so uh, forgive me if I get a little bit uh, choked up. Uh, good morning, uh, Dean Allard. Board of Trustees, faculty, parents, graduates, and guests of Brooklyn Law School. Thank you, Mr. Sabotnik, for that very kind and very generous introduction. I am so thrilled to have the opportunity to speak at your commencement today. I am particularly honored 
to have been granted this honorary degree from Brooklyn Law School. So I guess now I'm officially part of the Brooklyn team, right? I was very touched and nearly speechless when Dean Allard gave me the news. All I could keep saying was, I'm honored, I'm honored, I'm honored. You see, I came very close to attending Brooklyn Law School upon graduating from Yale, as it had and still has a very robust public interest curriculum and active student body, as we've heard already this morning. But Columbia gave me more money. <laughs> I think you all can understand why I went in that direction. But it is my good fortune that as a judge sitting in a federal court just a few blocks away from the school, I have had the privilege and joy of participating in Brooklyn Law School's various academic bench and bar programs, including judicial internships. I look forward enthusiastically to a continued partnership with Brooklyn Law School to supplement the school's curriculum with judicial internships, advocacy programs, and access to court proceedings and judges as learning vehicles. I am proud and pleased to say that a number of my former student interns and law clerks are Brooklyn Law School graduates, all of whom have distinguished themselves in their legal career. Indeed, I am particularly pleased and grateful that one of my first law clerks, as you heard, Jeanette rodriguez Mark, is part of today's procession on this stage. As you heard, she currently is a judge of the New York State Court of Claims, sitting in both the Court of Claims and as an acting Supreme Court Justice in the criminal term. I am so very proud of her and grateful to count her as my good friend. There are two other people on this stage who I want to acknowledge with heartfelt thanks. The Honorable I. Leo Glasser, Sr., District Judge of the Eastern District of New York. He is a dear mentor and friend to me and to so many of our colleagues in the Eastern District, and a professor and former dean of Brooklyn Law School who graduated from Brooklyn Law School 70 years ago in 1948. He's still going strong, believe me. A member of the greatest generation, he had to interrupt his studies of law at night at Brooklyn Law School to serve in the Army during World War II, but he came back to Brooklyn Law School and studied again at night under the GI Bill. I also want to thank my friend and colleague who also is here, the Honorable Ramon E. Reyes, U.S. Magistrate Judge of the Eastern District of New York, another distinguished graduate of Brooklyn Law School. He deserves a hand. <laughs> Indeed, Brooklyn Law School has produced many illustrious attorneys and jurists, some of whom studied at night, like Judge Glasser, while working full-time and raising families, also like Senior District Judge Sterling Johnson of my court. He was also my boss was when I was in the Special Narcotics Prosecutor's Office. Many of them broke barriers in the profession as women and minorities. So congratulations, class of 2018. You now have the opportunity to follow the example of those who came before you who have made their mark as attorneys in the private sector, as public service servants, as academics and judges, and put your own stamp on the world. Most importantly, you should resolve to go forth and use your newly minted skills 
energy, and intelligence to do good. As you go forth, you will be challenged to step out of your comfort zone and face uncharted paths. Perhaps you might feel a little afraid or nervous to do, to, do so. Apparently, you've already experienced that. Go forth anyway. Break new ground. That nervousness and fear, if channeled correctly, can keep you sharp and force you to be prepared. Do not fear failure. Welcome it. Embrace it. As Abraham Lincoln said, my great concern is not whether you have failed, but whether you are content with your failure. Colin Powell, who like me grew up in the South Bronx, said this about success. There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. I learned these lessons early in my career as a relatively new prosecutor trying my first Class A1 felony against seasoned, highly regarded defense attorneys. I had no second seat. I was out there by myself. I prevailed and won the case because I heeded the advice of my supervisor. Don't be intimidated. Just be prepared and do your best. Think about one of the giants of the legal profession, Justice Thurgood Marshall, one of my heroes. Early in his career, he was trying cases for the NAACP in areas where he and his colleagues risked being lynched. He must have been afraid and concerned for his life but he went forth anyway and see what great things he accomplished. Make no mistake, there will be many challenges that await you. And that's the excitement of it all, what makes the journey interesting. We live in tumultuous times. School children must engage in active shooter drills to ensure a proper response in the event a classmate decides to bring a firearm to school. People have questioned why our criminal justice system incarcerates more people than any country in the world, most of them poor, black, and Hispanic. There is widespread concern over the protection of our constitutional rights, immigrant issues, and the spread of terrorism. The events of 9-11 have made us willing to accept the presence of armed soldiers in our train stations and to increase the level of scrutiny as we travel from one place to another. Some may view this as a discouraging picture. However, George Washington, one of the architects of the Constitution and this great experiment called the United States of America, said, we must never despair. Our situation has been compromising before, and it changed for the better. So I trust it will again. If difficulties arise, we must put forth new exertion and proportion our efforts to the exigency of the times. I agree with Washington. We should not despair. There is hope. If history has taught us anything, it has shown us that since the time of the American Revolution, lawyers have been at the forefront of social change and protection of our civil liberties. When the judiciary has come under attack, it has been the lawyers who have come to its defense to underscore the importance of the rule of law, the separation of powers, and the checks and balances of three separate and equal branches of government. They have been true to their oaths, the oaths that each of you will take, and every judge here has taken, 
to protect and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. There is hope for the future, and it lies in you. Today's graduate from graduates from great academic institutions like Brooklyn Law School, with its emphasis on the importance of public service. Your many pro bono projects and clinics, like the Safe Harbor Clinic for Asylum Seekers, LGBTQ Clinic, Public Defender Clinic, and Community Defender Clinic, to name a few, your fellowships and internships with judges, government offices, and nonprofit organizations have inspired a large portion of the graduating class to enter public service. Those of you who enter private practice also have a duty to defend the principles embodied in the Constitution. Wherever you work, you and your colleagues should adhere to the professional rules of ethics, conduct yourselves professionally and courteously, and ensure that opportunities are available to all equally, without favor to any person based on gender, race, religion, ethnicity, or other classification. These duties we all, judges and lawyers, share equally. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of conducting yourselves courteously and professionally with devout adherence to the attorney's code of professional responsibility and ethics. As you zealously defend your clients and their lofty goals, do not lose sight that this is a profession and not a job, or that a court of law is a place where all parties regardless of their status, should be treated with respect and dignity. As a judge, I expect no less from the attorneys who appear before me. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg reminds us that reacting in anger or annoyance will not advance one's abilities to persuade. I could not agree more Great lawyers connect with people, understand them, sympathize and empathize with them. And I will add that they conduct themselves as true officers of the court. Ultimately, this great American experiment, while not perfect, has succeeded because of our collective respect for and adherence to the principles embodied in our Constitution. Many countries around the world admire it and seek to replicate it. <laughs> Supreme Court Justice David Davis, writing for the court in Ex Parte Milligan in 1866, said, the Constitution of the United States is a law for rulers and people equally in war and in peace, and covers with the shield of its protection all classes of men, I might also add women, at all times and under all circumstances. However, as Justice Ginsburg has cautioned, a constitution as important as it is will mean nothing unless the people are yearning for liberty and freedom. As you go forth and forge your careers as attorneys, you must be determined to be heroic, to remember and be true to your dreams and ideals. You must advocate zealously for those ideals within the bounds of the law, adhering to the rule of law and the constitutional principles we hold dear never allowing failure to overtake you, but rather learning from it so that you will be stronger. Above all else, always strive to do good in all things. By doing so, you cannot help but become a success 
and ensure that this great American experiment will continue to thrive and inspire the world. Congratulations to all our graduates and your families. Go forth bravely and do great things. The world awaits you. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Judge Azari. <clears throat> Dean Nick Allard will now address the graduating class. All right, try to curb your enthusiasm. Uh, please be seated. <laughs> Now, for the second surprise of this ceremony, I'd like to call Vice Chairman Frank Aquila um, to the podium for a special presentation. Frank. Good morning, and congratulations to all of you in the class of uh, 2018, and I look forward to welcoming you in moments uh, as uh, fellow uh, alumni. Uh, I would first like to recognize the members of the class of 1968 who are here on stage and are making their 50th reunion year, uh, Joseph Catanzaro, Danny Greenblatt, and Martin Siegel. Also celebrating his 50th reunion year is the chairman of our board of trustees, Stuart Sabotnik. Stu has been chairman of the board since 2004 and a member of the board since the 1990s. In that time, he has led our great law school into the 21st century and to the forefront of legal education that is nationally and internationally recognized for innovation and excellence. His extraordinary philanthropy to create the Subotnik Center, which our student speaker referenced earlier, has invigorated the intellectual life and the social engagement of the law school community for generations of students, faculty, employees, and alumni. He made an extraordinary gift to our residence hall, File Hall, and he established the Stuart and Anita Sabotnik Foundation Scholarship, which for 30 years has helped to support students attain a Brooklyn Law School degree in the part-time program as he did 50 years ago. As president and chief executive officer of Metro Media Company, Stu has distinguished himself as a long and successful business leader in business and media. He has served on the boards of major arts, education, health, and cultural organizations. Stu, uh, if you would please come to the podium. <laughs> Stuart Sabotnik, we honor you today for your many decades of outstanding leadership, dedication, vision, and unparalleled service and support to Brooklyn Law School. We look forward to your continued leadership in further advancing the law school nationally and internationally. It is my privilege now, on behalf of the unanimous Board of Trustees, to bestow upon you this honorary degree, which, as you know, is the highest degree granted by Brooklyn Law School. Please accept this with our heartfelt thanks and appreciation for all you have done for decades for Brooklyn Law School. <laughs> Stu, boss, what can I say? You're the greatest. I, I really share uh, in congratulating Stuart Sabotnik and his fellow members of the 50th reunion class 
um, Reverend Thorne, I cannot, I sincerely say I cannot rec recall a more beautiful opening blessing and one that's more timely. Thank you. I, um, <clears throat> if memory serves about Ascension time, there's a gospel with the apostles standing around looking up and a man who is not named in the gospel comes up and says, what are you doing? And they remain looking up and they don't really hear or understand what he's asking. And finally he says, aren't you supposed to be doing something? Get going. And that I think is consistent with the theme of your beautiful passage about the wind and it's the theme of what we're doing here today. It's the purpose of what we're doing. So thank you again for being with us. Chief Judge, your words also are incredibly apt, and it's just let me say, you honor us by your presence. Thank you for being here with us. I always love being in the presence of Judge Glasser, a remarkable man. His World War II service as part of the greatest generation was mentioned. He doesn't talk about it as most of those people, like most of people my generation's parents don't talk about it. But his service included, for example, manning a double-barreled 50 millimeter machine gun on the back of a half-track as part of General Patton's Third Army, which raced forward in a blizzard and in record time rescued the trapped American forces in the Battle of the Bulge. So it was no small thing that he did that. He's not only been the former dean, but he's been a great source of advice and judgment and wisdom, frequently not only helping me uh, decide what to do, but the stupid things I'm thinking about and keeping me uh, from doing them. So I'm personally very grateful for that. So Maria Diaz, you're, I, I, will bet, I will venture a guess that in the history of this incredible facility where uh, Frederick Douglass and Lincoln spoke uh, where Barishnikov had his first dance performance after he defected uh, from Russia, or whether the great Italian operatic stars from Caruso to Pagliacci to Scalia, um, that's pretty funny, you can laugh, <laughs> appeared. I don't think that in that entire history that words like some of the words that you used uh, were ever used here. But you can see why your classmates voted you for the position because you demonstrate a wonderful empathy, and empathy I think that um, connects with the message and the words of the chief judge, uh, and demonstrates that you're going to have a real knack as a lawyer in connecting with people and serving them. When you get around to it, I, you know I've already recommended it, and obviously you haven't seen it yet, but I'd like you to see uh, another Tom Hanks movie, Bridge of Spies, which many of you know was filmed in part around and at the law school, uh, the Brooklyn scenes, and they used File Hall uh, as a wardrobe room and makeup for the actors, uh, which was kind of odd in the summer when we had people visiting, especially we had a f group of 50 uh, aspiring Chinese applicants who visited and they saw folks dressed in 1950s gear and thought it was you know, the headquarters for the, for the Godfather or something when they visited File Hall. But anyway, the point of that um, movie uh, in this very key passage is uh, he explains uh, to a gentleman who's trying to coerce him and not abide by his obligations, his ethical obligations as a lawyer to his client who was very unpopular. He was a, um, a captured and accused spy and he was defending him to the best of his ability and the government wanted him to roll over, and basically he said to the government officer, he says, where do you come from? And the government um, officer said, I am, it actually was a, probably a member of the CIA, he said, well, I, I'm of German heritage, and uh, Hank said, well, I'm of Irish heritage. He says, so we're all different, what, what keeps us together? And um, the fellow was kind of dumbfounded, and he explained, what keeps us together is we all have the same rule book and that rule book is the Constitution. 
And so if you want to you know, see a good inspiration for what lies ahead and what you can do as a lawyer, that's another fine movie to watch. Well, uh, our valedictorian. Maria, you spoke about family, which was very touching. I notice, Maria, that your grandmother is with you here, Eleanor. I see Eleanor has the prize seat sitting next to Marla. Um, you know there is an old uh, saying about the definition of a genius. The definition of a genius is a C-minus student with a Jewish grandmother. <laughs> and, you know, by that measure, your grandmother, uh, Eleanor, uh, you know, has uh, probably a Nobel laureate on her hands here, so that's really wonderful. And I know that she's cavelling and has much knockus up there in the balcony. Um, it's fantastic. Congratulations. So um, today I'm going to speak about wielding the power of a legally trained vine with virtue, civility, and courage. But for starters, I want to share to you something that really moved me that I learned last night, and it's very much on my mind on this very special occasion, which I think is very special uh, for all of you, certainly, but also because of what you will be doing for the community, the nation, and, and the world. And um, your classmate, Janice Dishon, introduced me to her uh, three daughters, who were wonderful. Fatimi, Aisha, and uh, Salima. Janice explained to me that the reason she studied law was not for her, but she wanted to prove to her three daughters, prove to them and to show them by her example what they themselves could accomplish. She wanted to inspire them, and she has. One of them aspires to be a judge. One of them aspires to be a successful lawyer. And the other, firecracker, aspires to run for high office someday. This is very moving. Um, and I didn't ask Janice permission to talk about that. But she did, she did ask me to talk about the part-time program, which she's been enrolled in. And I'm not going to do that. <laughs> But the reason I'm not going to do that is because I think you know this and you've heard me say this, that I don't like calling those students that take four or five years uh, part-time. I think that's a misnomer because I really believe that, if anything, they should be called extra time or double time, <laughs> given how hard and long they work. But I will say, Janice, to you and to everyone here, that your example, and I'm picking out one example I could probably randomly pick from this crowd or the families here and find many, many, many examples. You're emblematic, really, of what is truly special, unique, and great about our law school and has part of its DNA since it was opened, and it really sets us apart. And that is the breadth and depth of the excellent education and the educational opportunity that it provides to people from every walk of life and circumstance. I ask Janet and her daughters, as surrogates for all of you, to please stand and receive our applause wherever you are. I can't see you. Go ahead, stand up. Where are your daughters? Okay. Now, I'm sure that all of our graduates 50 years from now, the expression 50 years from now seems like several lifetimes away. However, I promise you, your 50th reunion year uh, is going to, uh, which is 2068, <laughs> it will arrive in a flash. <laughs> you know, time is a way of slipping our grasp. I'm sure as you sit here today, it seems as though your time at Brooklyn Law School has passed at warp speed, right? Sure it has. When you were at the convention uh, convocation ceremony three years ago, uh, remember when I sang to you? Remember that? Um, I, remember, I remember, you're trying to forget, that I used a huge boom box and then the lights went out. Well, I learned a lesson. Um, 
Today we made sure the lights uh, will stay on, and I'm not going to use a boombox when I sing. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, James Allen, one of your classmates who you know, he said, forget the boombox, it's so 80s. You know, that made me feel a little bad. Ouch. <laughs> and uh, another classmate who's from Brooklyn, and I won't mention his name, but in the true vernacular of this community said, hey, why don't you sing Archipelago? Uh, so, <laughs> Giselle Mate uh, Mateus politely asked me to show a movie instead, so you know it's that I like movies. Um, but be patient, just be patient. You may be pleasantly surprised. We might have another surprise for you. At your convocation, you might recall that I told you to do the work of law school, and if life does not throw you an unexpected curveball, you will graduate before you possibly can imagine. And it'll come and seem that that graduation day today will be in the blink of an eye. Trust me on that. I was quoting from my convocation. Well, I don't know if you believed me at the time, but as you're sitting, as you were sitting in the federal courthouse then, but you were probably anxious about what lay ahead and unsure whether you had what it took to earn a law degree. Well, here you are today, ready to take on the world as new lawyers, and I mean it. Uh, the education you've received and the quality of your achievements are better than most and second to none. Two days ago, in St. Petersburg, Russia, Professor David Reese and I were present for the awarding of a new Nobel Law type prize for law. Our own professor, Neil Cohen, who has more lifetime achievement awards than Meryl Streep, <laughs> was prominently recognized as a semifinalist. He didn't win this year, but he's on the list. Uh, I'll note that there were no Russian or American finalists this particular year, so, you know, we're st we'll be still in the running. Your school at this very incredible ceremony attended by 5,000 leading jurists and academics from six continents um, was prominently featured. Uh, the work of Cohen was featured, uh, and your school was noted as one of 80 of the top universities and educational institutions in the world that were invited uh, exclusively to nominate candidates for the prize. I just mention this as just one very tiny but significant proof point about the quality of the education that you have received. And if you want compelling, convincing evidence, you have nothing to do than to look at the faculty that is here uh, that benefits you. And I will tell you, there is no day that passes when I am not incredibly interested and amazed, not only by their scholarship, by, but by the high quality and their commitment to effectively teaching you and preparing you for the world you're about to go into. So please give them a big round of applause. Well, today you're likely flooded with memories, thinking of your accomplishments, the friends you made, the challenges you met successfully, and perhaps, as Maria very compellingly recalled a few flare failures along the way, and that quote from Lincoln from the chief uh, judge made the same point. Um, and you learn from those things, and they will make you a better lawyer. It's kind of like an oyster, you know, has some kind of irritation from uh, a piece of grit or a piece of sand, and then ultimately produces something completely different and beautiful, a pearl. Well, that's what those hard times are like sometimes. They can generate really good things in the future. Well, I'm going to yield the floor for a few moments and let you speak for yourselves. Giselle, as I promised, here's a short documentary film featuring several of your fellow graduates sharing what their time at Brooklyn Law School has meant to them. It's just something we whipped up since last night when I spoke to you. 
When I think about what I'll miss most about Brooklyn Law School, I think about the opportunity to network with different individuals and get to know really great people as well as great teachers that are extremely helpful. The amazing faculty and, and employees here, I had such a wonderful time talking to them, getting to know them. Walking into the library and seeing all my good friends. I'm very grateful to pass these years with them and I really enjoy the time with all of them and I'm gonna miss all of them as well. This surprisingly was like a family. The intellectual challenge that we all give each other uh, to aspire to greatness. I have built the best friendships of my life I think here. There is not intense competition and everyone is kind of in it together. The one thing I'll miss the most about Brooklyn Law School is how close it is to O'Keeffe's. <laughs> <laughs> that was the watering hole for all three years and I think a lot of students would miss that. I think the most memorable law school events that I've had the fortune of participating are the Prince Memorial MOOCRA competitions. This year definitely barristers because that was definitely an experience. But <laughs> being here at the law school, I've actually met three Supreme Court justices over the three years that I've been here. My most memorable event at Brooklyn Law School was when Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor came to our campus. She was really down to earth. She told us about her law clerk who is from Brooklyn Law School, the only law clerk there that isn't from an Ivy League college. When Justice Sotomayor came, uh, she actually high-fived my hand. And I think part of the reason I did well was because of the power from that high five. I felt it, so that was, was pretty awesome. I was able to intern at the Court of International Trade, had family work there previously, and to kind of follow in those footsteps was very important to me. Taking a few law students down to the Texas border, where we provided legal advice for detainees at the border who are trying to find a better life here in the United States. Bessel's my 1L year had a round table, quick dating networking session with attorneys, and I ended up getting an internship at one of the places, and I've been working there throughout my law school career, and I'll be there in the fall, so it, it kind of set my path. So I had a few favorite professors. Uh, one was Winnie Taylor. She taught contracts. My favorite is probably Professor Gerber because he just knows so much about bankruptcy and, and his field of work, and he shares a lot of practical wisdom as well. My favorite professor is Professor Fullerton. From day one, she has been a huge supporter of mine. She was my professor for civil procedure. I was her research assistant as well, and she's been such a huge um, proponent of immigration issues on campus. Professor Torsky, because he's a, a torch legend, and it just had a very intellectually stimulating class. Professor Askin kind of allowed me to think broader about law and how you can work in the future and career-wise. I will miss Professor Feldman. She was a uh, very motivator, teaching me how to read the cases, how to analyze, how to understand. Professor Capers, both the classes I had with him, he had a pretty nice way of engaging conversation among students. My very professor was Professor Rahman. I was fortunate enough to take a seminar with him my last semester. He's just very interested in the same areas of law as me, and he was a great mentor throughout law school. I think every law student owes their family a tremendous thank you for everything that they've gone through and will continue to go through as they support us in our careers and our future endeavors. Thank you to my parents um, for just all the support. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my family for being so supportive and being there for me in terms of advice. My parents, without them I would not have been able to make it through these past three years. My biggest supporter was definitely my father. Uh, he's also an attorney and he's been a role model throughout my career. To my friends and my family, I know I've been a joy for the past two years, but I really appreciate all the support you've given me. To my fellow graduates, I would say that I hope after you get settled into your career that you find a way to, I guess, reconnect with current students. As I know in my own experience that the alumni have been an invaluable resource and I think that's one of the things that makes Brooklyn great. I say to my fellow graduates that I hope that I don't have to face off with any of you in court in the future. Congratulations, class of 2018. Special thanks to Clarinda Valenti and our entire communications team for having actually fun doing that, and I think they did a marvelous job. Um, I'll see you at the Academy Awards. Uh, we nominate for Best Short Documentary. So recently I've been thinking a lot about um, time 
And today, as you look back and look ahead and rate, uh, rightly celebrate your achievements, please take a moment to think about time and the uses of time by your legally trained mind. And I'm not talking about the dreaded billable hour, uh, which mo many of you will uh, soon become accustomed to uh, as a part of your daily routine. Um, I'm speaking of a more fundamental question, and how will you use your time on Earth? When you return for your 50th law school reunion in 2068, what will you look back on with pride? What will you regret? The concept of a bucket list is a cliche now, but you can go beyond the usual list of places we want to see or adventures that you'll want to have and create a bucket list of how to use the power of your legal educations and the law to make a positive difference. As you ponder those questions and think about what you want your legacy to be over time, I offer three seemingly old-fashioned words for you um, to consider relevant and they seem to me to be relevant more than ever before as lawyers, as citizens, and as human beings. Those three words are virtue, civility, and courage. The writer David Brooks talks about two kinds of virtues. And I'll tell you, as a law dean, I see a lot of resumes, and I go to a lot of funerals. And the resumes, the, the, the virtues that Brooks talks about are the resume virtues and the eulogy virtues. The resume virtues are the skills you bring to the marketplace. The eulogy virtues are the ones that are talked about at your funeral. Now, I know that you all have impressive resumes, the breadth of your accomplishments, including the jewel of your new JD or LLM is simply astounding. Someday when you're feeling blue, walk around Times Square and look at all the people who would wanna be in your shoes who respect you and need your help. But what about your eulogy virtues? What are the virtues that will embody and to which you will aspire, embody you and, and that you'll aspire to? How will your legally trained mind, your skills and your talents uh, and your term, determined effort help you stay true to your virtues, enable them to flourish? We must also strive ceaselessly to be civil. And by that, I mean civil in the true sense of the word in both our public and private lives. Now, civility has come to be synonymous with being polite, with good manners. Uh, you know, not raising your voices in argument as though we're on a cable news network. Yet the Latin root word for civility, civis, means much more because it literally means being a citizen. To be, civ to be civil is literally to engage conscientiously in a deeply important activity. It's to behave by fulfilling the duties of a free citizen and commit oneself to speech and action duly sensitive to the needs of your fellow citizens. Finally, you must have courage. This word, too, has multiple meanings. You can have physical courage, which was, as we have seen in countless examples, can come to people when they least expect it. You can have social courage, the courage of your convictions and your willingness to stand up for the right thing even though you may be criticized or ostracized. We see too often these days people of good faith who are excoriated on social media, but they persist nonetheless in their dedication to creating a better future for all of us. Perhaps the most powerful is existential courage. The courage to stare into the future and wonder whether your life is going to be meaningful. It's the courage to act, to move forward, to hope in the direst situations, to hope still. In fact, the author Barbara Ehrenreich coined this term writing about her own battle with cancer. So this kind of courage is to face the abyss, the prospect that what you do or feel may not matter and to keep going. It's the famous to be or not to be question. Many of us have seen this courage in loved ones facing serious illness. And we see it daily in stories about refugees and immigrants who risk their lives to give their family a better life. Throughout history, we have also seen, as the chief judge and other speakers noticed, we've seen lawyers stand up for the unpopular, the outnumbered, the different, the new, 
and the disadvantaged. It is the kind of courage that can change history. The class of 1968 graduated in a year full of tumult here at home and around the world, uncertainty about the future, and a rise in activism among young people. Sound familiar? Right. It was quite a time in the midst of the Vietnam War, bracketed by the assassination of a president and later his brother, and in between the incomparable Dr. Martin Luther King, assassinated 24 hours after he gave one of the most memorable speeches in history where he had a clear premonition of his own death. And like Dr. King, yet all of those people and the people that were engaged in relentless efforts to bring about social change and peace, they, like Moses, had a vision of a better world, of the promised land, which they themselves would never get to see, but had hopeful, hopefulness for and were determined to work for, for future generations. So future generations will look now at how you acted in this particular pivotal moment in history, or in the words of a song from the popular Broadway musical Hamilton, history has its eyes on you. As newly minted lawyers, you're just in time, like the Hollywood cavalry arriving in a Hollywood Western, needing to make a difference in the harsh and disruptive studies played out every day before our eyes and ears all across America and throughout the world. People are fighting over nothing less than the future of democracy and the future of humanity. The outcome of these fundamental disagreements, indeed epic fights over justice, equality, globalism, and the environment, for example, will determine whether the values and institutions that are proven to be vital to empowering and serving people will continue to evolve, improve, and endure. The alternative is if our civilization slips into a darker place, a dystopian world where outcomes are determined by power or violence or happenstance or immorality. The outcomes are very much in your hands. Now certainly there is ample reason for concern, but I'm determined to be optimistic for many reasons. A major one is what I see when I look out at the class of 2018. You are walking in the footsteps of generations of outstanding lawyers who have preceded you, including our distinguished speaker, the Honorable Dora Irizarry. Also, our esteemed former dean, who is also here on stage and a member of the class of 1948. And also, as you heard, U.S. District Court of Ju uh, Judge, the Honorable Jeanette rodriguez Morick. We have mentioned earlier many other graduates of our great law school, and so you're standing on their shoulders. But now is your time. This is your opportunity to step up. Don't expect to ride on our coattails. We're gonna be looking forward to you and we will follow you. It's your turn. It's your work to inherit. So you can remind us as you're doing that of classic virtues that make us proud, of the heroes we've long admired, virtues such as selflessness, courage, modesty, respect, and adherence to core principles and values. There are many, many causes begging for action, world health, poverty, oppression and violence, bigotry, ignorance, intolerance, and the well-being of the planet. Now, so without doubt, there's plenty of work to be done, and these problems, when you think about it, are so gigantic that they can be intimidated, and it, it's almost heroic, it's almost heroic to get involved and to wonder where to begin. So as you take on this life's work, it may help you to consider the observation by Sir Edmund Burke that the biggest mistake one can make is to do nothing because one believes they can do only a little. Your achievements and your dedication to the law fuels my hopes for the future. I, I only wish selfishly to live long enough to see how you will make the future better for my six grandchildren and their children. Elizabeth Zakim kidded me and said, I bet you're happy I'm graduating. And I said, I am happy you're graduating. I have such high expectations for all of you. Elizabeth, I expect you to be the head of GM or 
Uber or maybe some major blockchain company someday. Chardonnay Franklin, I, I miss you already. You've survived th three years living on the same floor as Marla and I. Y you can accomplish anything. <laughs> Your mother, uh, Allison, is here, and she will be one of the people in this wonderful tradition who has graduated from our law school and will be helping present your diploma. So I just remind everybody, when you see uh, a relative up here, it's because they're a graduate and they are uh, engaging this wonderful tradition. Sh Allison tells me that when she graduated a few years ago, uh, Chardonnay and her sister Giovanna were here and toddled across the stage when uh, she received her award. So I think we're coming full circus. Sur circus, we are coming full circus. <laughs> Well, so let's be virtuous, be civil, be courageous. Start by doing what's necessary, then do what's possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. In doing so, you will change the world. Congratulations. <clears throat> we are going to get to the main event but I'm sure you will all embrace the next task, and that is, it is my bittersweet responsibility to acknowledge a transition at the law school, the retirement of Professor Linda Feldman. See? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, she's staying through the bar exam which was very generous and gracious. Give her a big round of applause for that. Okay, I'll ask you all to be seated because I will tell you, and this is absolutely genuinely true, Linda Feldman is the most modest person, I ha it's unfathomable to me, in fact. She is so self-effacing, and I think it's difficult for her to realize sometimes how much we appreciate all that she does. She's a member of the class of 1983. She is the heart and soul of Brooklyn Law School. She was the is the founder and director of the Academic Success Program. Her extraordinary dedication to student success has done nothing less than transform the lives of generations of our students as students who have earned their law degrees and went on to successful careers. She personifies the principle that if students don't learn the way you teach, then you should teach them the way they learn. Professor Feldman's tireless work and endless innovation have made her a nationally recognized leader in the field of academic success. In fact, uh, in January, she received um, a National Achievement Award um, by the section involving the, her type of academic work from the American Association of Law Students. Unfortunately, and I think she preferred this because of bad weather, she had to Skype in and was stuck here on the East Coast, but we were all out celebrating in San Diego when she received the award. <laughs> well, um, it is really a well-deserved honor um, uh, to have worked with her. I mean, if, just, if, that she received, and it's a special privilege to work with her. Uh, as Professor Feldman has found joy in her career, I know that she'll also embrace the next chapter. I hope that she'll embrace the next chapter of her life with her trademark exuberance, energy, and intellectual curiosity. We thank her immensely for her many contributions to her students, to our students, and colleagues at Brooklyn Law School over the last 30 years, and we're going to miss her tremendously. Professor Feldman, please come forward so that we can recognize you with a round of applause and a small token of our esteem.
next year, right? It's beautiful. Thank you. More rehearsal next year. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Thank you, Linda Feldman. I now ask uh, the chairman for the next stage of these festivities. No more films. Um, I would now ask Julie Schooley, our Director of International Programs, to join me to assist with awarding of the Masters of Law degrees to the Class of 2018. <laughs> Brooklyn Law School welcomed its seventh class of LLM students this past August. As lawyers trained abroad, they came to Brooklyn Law School to develop a deeper understanding of American law. In addition to achieving that goal, they brought experience with the legal systems of Argentina, Azerbaijan, Bangladesh, Bolivia, Colombia, Dominican Republic, France, India, Kazakhstan, Nigeria, Pakistan, Spain, Tajikistan, Turkey, Ukraine, United Kingdom, and Uzbekistan into our classroom, enriching the educational experience of their classmates with their international perspective. Mr. Sabotnik, 22 candidates have successfully pursued the program leading to the degree Master of Laws. The faculty has found that they meet the standards of excellence and have demonstrated the personal qualities that make them worthy, worthy holders of this Brooklyn Law School degree. Will these candidates please rise? By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Laws with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please come to the stage. Alexandra Belakova. Zenith Jahan. <laughs> Olga Luzgina. Giselle Ajala Mateus. <laughs> Kosiaktakan Sevoleva. <laughs> Rosa Rosenswai. Rachel Agaban. Amina Kilmatova. Matthew Dickerson. Rini Agarwal. Kavita Samkuar. Susanna Vaca. Lara Gonzalez Fortes. <laughs> Amina, Amina Ibrahim. Raul Ortez. Gabriela Rendon Yanez. Wilda Escolastico. Shanice Kirak Hussein. Mohammed Razul Islam. Huram Shazad. Fajir Urulu. <laughs> Zulfia Hosenova.
<laughs> okay. We will now proceed with awarding of the Juris Doctor degrees to the class of 2018. I want to point out that in your commencement program, there are listed a number of group awards for membership on one of our scholarly journals the Moot Court Honor Society, the Alternative Dispute Resolution Honor Society, and for students who completed the fellowships and volunteered their services to the law school through various activities. Later this month, we will announce the Latin honors of our website as well as by, as by email. The faculty will also be selecting the recipients of our graduation awards and prizes and the complete list of awardees, along with the prize and award descriptions, will be posted on our website, and the recipients will be notified individually. We are very proud of these recipients and congratulate them on their significant achievements. So you're the guy. All right. So uh, we're going to do this. Uh, we're going to do it. This is a team. There are three of us who are going to do it. Um, but I'll, I'll explain. So before I begin to read the names, we begin to read the names of our graduates. Um, I want to mention that some of our graduates will be receiving diplomas from a relative who graduated from Brooklyn Law School uh, and are seated on the stage. Uh, this is a favorite graduation tradition of ours. So Mr. Zabotnik. 370 candidates have successfully pursued the long and arduous program leading to the degree of Juris Doctor. The faculty has found that they meet the standards of excellence and have demonstrated the personal qualities that make them worthy holders of the Brooklyn Law School degree. Will these candidates <clears throat> rise, please? By virtue of the authority vested in me, I confer upon each of you the degree of Juris Doctor with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. And now, under the direction of the marshals, I ask the candidates to please come to the stage row by row. Okay. Jaziel Morales and Oliver. Matthew Wolf, to assist in presenting his degree is Professor Michael Gerber. David P. Furman, he will receive his degree from his father, Mike Furman, class of 1989. Charles Healy. Rebecca Benjamin. Dana Gershavanich. Joseph Duthie. Meredith Cohn. Jason M. Karsh. Matthew Carroll. Laura R. Doyle. Sarah Stoughton, Francis M. Lewis, Jamie M. Robinson, Sinead Sinha, 
Alexa Bordner. Michael W. Mahan. David Sir. Leo Sa. Stefan Servakakis. Sorry. My apologies. <laughs> Craig McAllister. Bridget Sykes. All right, Brooke. Brooke Verdiglione. George William Seifert the third. Thomas Michaelides. Ronald Lee. Joseph Santiago. Abigail Recook. Anya Nicole Torelli. <laughs> Catherine M. Martin. Xiaoling <laughs> Ma. Benjamin J. Margolin. <laughs> Gabriella Sinisi. <laughs> Samantha N. Radlovich. <laughs> Melanie A. Summer. <laughs> Richard Saldano. Richard C. <laughs> Sergey Martz. <laughs> Brittany Rose E. Curtis. <laughs> Kayla E. Bargeron. <laughs> Michael C. Benson. Colin S. Epps. Andrew, Andrew Kimball. James Austin Allen. Danny Duong. Amar Jaber. And Kyle Hudak. Dylan J. Hans, Pierce E. Hessinger. Tyler W. Flynn. Brandon H. Perlman, who will be receiving his degree from his father, Ira M. Perlman, class of 1984. Jack Liketongue. David Gelfand. <laughs> Paula A. Rivera Chavez and Andrea Cepeda. John T. Ajeli. Ilana B. Sharon. Woo! 
Erica A. Brown, who will be receiving her degree from her father, Clifford J. Brown, class of 1984. Christopher K. Whelan. Parker S. Rothman. Christina M. Barry. Kenneth P. Coyle. Samantha A. Carp. Jonathan Doman. Christopher S. Aitken. John Hill. Timothy M. Connolly O'Toole. Hunter G. Ben Harris. Rachel F. Goldstein. Jenna L. Keller. Kieran C. Marr. Melissa J. Bartone. Jonathan Kwan. Yeah. Sasha Safavi. <laughs> Max Shapiro. <laughs> David J. Kugler. <laughs> Chad Schwach. Joshua Wiseman. George W. Peters. Nicholas M. Laverde. Dean M. Vergara. Kara A. Findel. Christopher D. Murphy. Desiree D. Jamasby. Samuel A. Glusberg. Ashley S. Helberg. Elizabeth L. French. Ana Nunez Cardenas. Anusha Cosima. Alyssa Abuhaf. <laughs> Lauren Greenberg, who will be receiving her degree from her mother, Deborah Greenberg, class of 1987. <laughs> Isadora Kutsulius. <laughs> Alana K. Hefferman. Max C. Lubin. Samantha T. Tucker, who will be receiving her degree from her cousin, Nina Gorman, class of 2011. Thomas Koziel. Peter D. Lotfalla. Yeah. 
Brianna T. Thomas. Dejanay M. Nisbet. Giancarlo N. Martinez who will be receiving his degree from his father, Antonio C. Marni Martinez II, class of 1990. Amel Spahia? Yeah, perfect. Amel Spahia. <laughs> Ariel S. Vered. Saroja Cuffey. Alana Brifa. <laughs> Yulia Gonickman. <laughs> Simone A. Gray. <laughs> Lindsay A. Javits. <laughs> Krishna Kreke. Rose H. Bagley. Aziza Ahmad. Michelle S. Lee. Paul H. Jang. <laughs> Brian Kim. Archana Sundar. Basam H. Dola. Jared M. Cinnamon. Mark Ruckelsman. Abraham Kuntzlinger, who will be receiving his degree from his father, Joseph Kuntzlinger, class of 1993. Jordan A. Wiener who will be receiving his degree from his mother, Randy C. Schustel, class of 1988. Woo! David N. Yigdal. <laughs> Michael W. Mayones. Jeremiah P. Ledwidge. Andrew E. Zire. Martin A. Passante. Kara Shannon McCabe. Christina A. Manginelli. <laughs> Remy Milnes. <laughs> Francis M. Felipe. <laughs> Matthew B. Horowitz. <laughs> Christopher G. Aaron Gurin. Carolyn B. Fulham. Kiara Mia Upizi. <laughs> Melissa Faith Esposito. Francis Louise Canadian. <laughs> Sarah, 
Samantha Ann Barish. Gabriella Ann Conti. So uh, you'll notice I brought in reinforcements for the reading of the names. There are a lot of you. Uh, but I just wanted to point out what was, uh, what was going on. So uh, if Linda Feldman is a big part of what's made us great over the last few decades, uh, what we hope is that Professor Mulligan will be a big part of what will make us great over the next few decades. So we're very proud of her. <laughs> Megan Lawrence Shaw. Tyler J. Gratton. Victoria Marie Phillips. Benditovius? Yep, Benditovius. Benditovius. Joshua Simon Benditovius. Your daughter. My daughter is. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> Diana Moroto Mentoring. Jamila J. Moore. Darlene L. Motley. Amy Yamada. Roshni Shah. Sam Shivraj. Anthony R. Messina. Aaron Lehrman. Elliot R. Steinfeld. Daniel J. Niger. Peter J. Karupia. Beverly R. Burt. Eric Draclis. Sandra Lovelivo and Kingsley Lovelivo. We have Cassandra N. Love Olivo and Kingsley Love Olivo. We have Alyssa Paddock and Ariel Guest. Courtney S. Birchler. Taylor M. Kelly. Allison N. Hosevar. Alexa Carrero. Zachary P. Buniak. Peter K. Curto. Asma Anwar. Gregory A. Burns. And we have Ryan M. Foreman, who will be receiving his degree diploma from his father, Neil B. Foreman, class of 1966. So we have Chardonnay A. Franklin, who's receiving her degree from Allison Franklin, class of 2002, her mother. Stephen N. Gordon. Emma Browning. Anita Ajiboy. Charlene Valdez Warner. 
Lindsay A. Morrow. Charles R. Smith. Casey T. Mahoney will be receiving her degree from her father, Kevin W. Mahoney, class of 1988. Natan Segeti. Eliyahu Weiss. Robert M. Persuti. Sinan Ziulan. <laughs> Danielle Spies. Claire Elise Wasserman. Charles T. Diamond. Leah F. Wolofsky. Lawrence P. Galena. Salvatore M. Daniele. Kadruta Antonovecci. Thank you. Brian Hoffman. Khalil P. Huey. Christina M. De Cruz. Mark Creeden. Alexander S. Cox. Mayor Y. Friedman. Michael Haber. Tara Kelly. Aaron DeDuge. Pietro C. Tyrone. Shyan Sultan. Nicholas J. Safran. Jayon Danny Lee. Jack H. Muldering. Zachary J. Strongen. Hallie L. Landsman. Yeah. Eric A. Orsini. Yeah. Edgar Osorio. Yeah. Richard J. Steinberg. Yeah. Sierra Mian Strasberg. Yeah. Justin Karasik. Keith M. Kirsch. Aaron D. Justice. Ryan J. Foley. Sarah C. Capasso Cosen. Nicole D. Corey. We have Gabriella Bianco, uh, who's getting her degree from Albert M. Annunziata, class of 1974, her uncle. Thank you. Kara L. Higgins. 
Allison M. Weeman. Brielle C. Oshinsky. Asmika Dangle. Juliana Frankel. Darren N. Levin. Donald R. Roper. Zachary J. Shapiro. Jacob Lamar. Dana M. Vassers. Sydney R. Schechter. Dylan V. Schlesinger. Simone S. Lamont. Nicole L. Gittleman. Libby L. Vilher. Moshe H. Nagdi. James G. Groman. Stephen Bovino. <laughs> Arthur C. Ha. Paul C. Hurst. Marco A. Duenas will be receiving his degree from Lawrence A. Succaro, class of 1975, and a member of our Board of Trustees. Nina Hrushko. <laughs> Ankit Kapoor. <laughs> Rohit Biswas. <laughs> Elena Manikamova, we were receiving her degree from Stan Weber, class of 2017, her fiance. Stephanie Ann Quintero will be receiving a degree from her cousin, Sarah Ray Dejam, class of 2016. <laughs> Sherry A. Quo and Willow Quo. <laughs> Heather D. Lanter. Martina Kaznowski. <laughs> Jessica Martin. <laughs> Jessica B. Laredo will be receiving her degree from Marcy G. Laredo, class of 1988, her mother. <laughs> Jessica L. Wishart. Ashley M. Thomas. Eric Vandestow. Kenneth Zwerin. John P. Longevin. Anna Har Hankey. Samara A. Khan. Matthew C. Krango will be receiving his degree from his father, Charles R. Krango, class of 
Hi, how are you doing? Steffi Jean Jacques. Aisha Forbes Diaby. Brittany Bell. Ara Sophia Chung. Balfour A. Thompson. Tafik Hassan. Bruce Gomez. Patrick B. Klein. Elizabeth A. Heifetz. Christina Delaporte. Christine Coleman Einerson. Janice A. Dizon. Paul Young Park. <laughs> Hannah Laufer. <laughs> Daniel M. Wolf. <laughs> Juliet Nicole Raphael. Ayantha Paula Stewart. Hajar Lakuli. Eliana Newman Wasser. Dylan Nevis Cox. Karina M. Lozada. Christopher J. Sharwath. Anna McKaylin. Christopher M. Rossi. Allison Broad. John E. Fagan. Marvin A. Espana. Mary Paula La Barbera. Jenna M. Consiglia. Joseph L. Brenningstall. Margiselle Estevez. Ulta Jocha. Sean M. Beharic. Danielle Y. Clayton. Amanda M. Hamilton. Michael S. Olson. Edwina Y. Amanda Lapari.
Emily F. Musson. Catherine E. Scott. Gilbert A. Zelaya. Kevin Torge. Francesca G. Mayoto. Brittany M. Mastrangelo. Elatira, I got that wrong. P. Diakopoulos. Daniel P. Carney. Rachel B. Poland. Ann E. Conroy. Jamie M. Freilich. Lauren Rayner Davis. Paulina E. Baginska. Sarah K. Groming. Drita Dokic. Michael A. Kumar. Olivia Krizaminski. Noel Block Lubin. Jessica Fung. William Stanton. Amanda and Sergideo. Jang Jen Jong. James J. Lavelle. Vadim Zilberman and Mark. Patrick J. Matatina. Christina M. Road. Gabrielle, Gabriella R. Schwalbe. Christine Thambaswamy. Iman Tariq. Sanam Shah. Sanam Shah. Matthew Mummert. Eric A. Wattels. Dane St. Cyr. Patrick Sheehan. Jessica B. Ort. Thank you very much. Mega K. Patel. Rohini Manik. Sarah S. Omri. Camelia R. Brown. Ryan S. Miller. 
Patrick M. O'Donnell. Julie Ryu. Drew C. Morgan. Ismail A. Sharif. Hey, how you doing? Maria Esperanza Ortiz. Joy Park. Maria C. Papadopoulos. Jaron N. Berman will be receiving his degree from Howard M. Jaslow, class of 87, his uncle. Maxwell A. Bottini. Julia B. Bombs. Elizabeth J. Knowlton. Sierra Carr. Jennifer Kathleen Rankin. Okay, that was the class of 2018. <laughs> Dean Nick Allard will now close the 170th Brooklyn Law School commencement ceremony. It's an honor also. After which, I ask that the faculty members and our guests on stage leave the hall first by departing from the stage through the hall, and that the students follow the faculty members. I ask the guests, please, remain in their seats until the processional is completed. And again, thank you. Thank you all. Okay. That's yours. Yeah. Well. The 117th Brooklyn Law School commencement is concluded. Congratulations on your extraordinary accomplishment. With your law degree comes a great and sobering responsibility to be the guardians of the law, and in the words of the preamble to the Constitution, to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. The future is in your hands. You're empowered with the tools honed by your legal education to make the world a better place. At your convocation, I encourage you to dream big, experiment, engage with purpose, and make us as proud of you tomorrow as we are today. In fact, the song I sang was Cole Porter's Experiment. Well, you've indeed lived up to that, and you've made us proud, and now we expect great things from you. I have every confidence you'll go forth to add your own impressive and distinctive achievements to the Brooklyn Law School legacy. 
Now remember, you're all officially alumni of the best law school in Brooklyn. <laughs> and you know what's coming next. It's the best law school in the greatest, most exciting borough in the Big Apple of the Empire State and the most enduring, successful Democratic Republic on the planet. So we got that going for us. I look forward to seeing each of you and your guests at the picnic at the law school plaza and also indoors for those who are less hardy souls. Uh, following this ceremony immediately. Enjoy the celebration and good luck to the start of your real education. Bye-bye. <laughs>